Hey guys, my name is Homel and I'm a structural engineer who is studying for the PE. Today I'm here to answer a quick question. How to tab your steel construction manual? And this is the 15th edition. And in this video I'm going to provide you with the symbols for each tab, the pages corresponding to each symbol, and then explain why I tabbed certain portions of the manual. So if you get some value from this video, please like and subscribe and let me know what your quick question is that I may be able to answer. Thank you. All right, so the first thing to know about the steel manual is that the manual is just the first half, I would say, and that's where you have a lot of like tables with design values, and these are very quick to, to find once you have them tabbed, and then you just get your design values and you compare it to your demand, and boom, there you go. Um, now, the second portion is a little more in-depth, and that's the specification. And the specification I tabbed is this portion here, and this has the formulas and the methods of how you calculate um, your bending, your compression, and so on and so forth to get to those tables. And then after that, the main section is your commentary, and this is in gray here. I don't have many things tabbed there, but... Uh, that gives a lot of explanation, extra explanation, why things are in the specifications or in the manual. So let's let's jump to it. The first portion that I tabbed are my section properties. And I go here, as a structural engineer, I go to these tables all the time to find some section properties that are very help, helpful uh, to do some hand calcs, for example, moment of inertia, section modulus, uh, web thickness, and flange thickness. Those are really helpful when you're designing connections and other things. Now, this tab here is for my material properties. And this is great because especially when you're dealing with materials that you're not as familiar with, you can come here and then see in black the preferred um, grades, A36, A500, and then all the different grades. And this is very helpful when you are designing anything to just come here and see what, what's readily available. And then you follow this chart. So this is a very helpful table as a structural engineer. And I believe studying for the PE as well, it will be a good place to have tabbed. The next one is still in the manual here now for beam design and this is a the first one is the C sub B values for simply supported beams and this is um, same pages one page after the other I have tabbed because these are very important to get some capacities for example you want to know what a W let's W27 by 217 what's the maximum moment capacity you can find it here and you can find what embrace length corresponds to that moment uh, to that maximum moment and so on and so forth so this is um, a good handy table to have and following that table you have your charts and this is um, nice to double check with your unbrace lengths let's say you have an unbrace length of 22 of 22 feet and then you have about 1500 uh, kip feet moment so you just follow here 1500 and then 22 feet and then you can get something that's more like a w33 by 152 to work or anything that has a higher anything above this or has a higher moment capacity so this is a good good quick way to double check your um, your calculations as well same similarly here um, for just the moment capacities I'm here all the time when I'm designing HSS beams or HSS posts uh, just to get that maximum moment capacity for that HSS shape so very handy now this tab here is very important because I personally have this tab uh, as a bookmark on my work computer, but I know for the PE, I won't have that luxury. So I'm gonna be using 
this a lot more um, just to get my beam formulas and deflection and moment formulas. So this is really helpful. There are several conditions here. Then moving on, now we did some flexure stuff, right? So now we're into compression. And I try to be very brief with the, the symbol so that I, when I see it, I'm, I'm getting familiar with the symbol and I'm also um, knowing what that is. So if I see phi sub c, p sub n, I know that that's uh, the compress, the maximum compressive strength for that um, section. So there, are, and there are several sections here. In this case, it's a W shape. And I can see my capacities here. So this is a very quick reference. And then still in compression, we have some critical stress stresses here for compression members. When you're designing columns, you have your maximum moment and you also have your maximum critical stress. And in some PE problems, you may uh, find that helpful. Or if you're just doing a hand calc and want to double check your critical stress, this is a good place to go as well. After compression, we have tension. And then we're going to find some handy available strength in axial tension tables here. So same thing as compression, pretty straightforward, but good, good to have tabbed and come to this pretty quickly. Now combined forces, if you have a beam column, for example, and you have both bending and um, tension or compression and shear, you come to these tables. So I tabbed as both compression and flexure here bending. So I know that it's a combined, it's the combined forces section. Another table that I like to come to all the time is just my bolt strength based on the uh, bolt type and whether I'm considering the threads or not. In this case, for example, if I have a three quarters um, diameter bolt, that's 830 ASTM A325. So that's group group A. And so group A is right here. And we know based on the footnotes here that N indicates that the threads are included in the shear plane, which means that you have less area in your shear plane. Therefore, the capacities are lower. So group A, N for three quarters, if I'm using RFD is 17.9 kips in shear. So there you go. I'd come here and get my shear capacity right away. So this is really, really help is a really helpful table to have tabbed. And still in the connections portion, I have just eccentric connections. And here is in case there's a question in the PE that you have a configuration like this, and you want to find your bolt group capacity. You can use the tables, follow this equation here that the manual gives and quickly get your whole group capacity and see if that group can take the shear. Now we're into welds and this is a very handy formula that's used all the time to get the weld capacity. And this is for a fillet weld. Um, note that you can't necessarily use this formula for um, a bevel weld, for example. So just make sure that you use the proper formula and there are some simplified formulas here as well so it's a good good page to have tabbed and then similar similar to the bolts if you have an eccentric weld you know similar to this figure here you can use some equations here and then use this table to find your weld capacity prying action um in structural engineering, if you have something pulling, like a WT, for example, like this, um, depending on the thickness, you may have some extra prying that you have to account for. So this is a good page to have tabbed to see what um, you need to consider for, for that prying action, which the formula is actually yeah, right here. You can see what thickness you need to have in those sections in order for prying to not occur. And then now it's gonna go a little faster here because this is just the whole chapter for shear connections. If you if you have a connection project and you want to quickly 
get some values for the entire connection, the, both the angle and the welds and whatnot, this is a good place to, to come to. And then base plate here, I like this section just to get some formulas here for some Hancocks for base plates, but also the next one, if you're doing red lines, marking up a drawing and you wanna make sure you specify the proper washer size, washer thickness, anchor rod diameter, and the hole diameter, this is a good reference for recommended sizes. So there you go. Now, I think this will come really handy, especially if you're not as familiar with certain sections of the manual. And that's why it's important to tab your manual because you can quickly, you can learn quicker. Um, because you can just come to here and then see what those um, symbols mean and then go back to your appropriate section. And then this is to determine whether an element is slender or not slender. You use this equations here, so it's widely used. So it's, it's nice to have it all tabbed up. Now, going forward, these are just um, the main chapters for the specification portion. So whether you are calculating, doing calculus for stability, tension, compression, flexure, you have the entire chapter tabbed. So it's nice if you need to do a hand calc or check an equation. For example, for welds, if it's not a fillet weld, you come to the weld, the connections chapter, and then you, you see all your, your different equations here to calculate the nominal uh, stress or the capacity for your weld. Now, lastly, we have just a couple more here. This K, it's actually in the commentary. This chart is widely used for designing columns. So it's, it's good to have it tabbed here as a reference and also this chart, which is, there's also a similar one in concrete design. And lastly, last but not least, some section properties here that if you're in the exam and you don't have access to a software, um, of course, you, you need to know some formulas just to get your moment of inertia, section modulus for different shapes. So it's good to have a tab just in case you need to, it's not provided in the problem and you need to calculate that. So this is it. Let me know if I missed anything um, or if you have any other suggestions. Thank you.